where does PQQ or pyroloquinolone quinone, I'm only gonna say it once, fit in with mitochondria and energy production? So up until 2010, researchers thought that PQQ just protected the mitochondria from oxidative damage. Remember when we release free radicals, those are compounds which have an unpaired electron and desperately trying to grab electrons from elsewhere in the process they cause something called oxidative damage. So previously researchers thought that this was, the, uh, this was how P -P PQQ helped with protect mitochondria, okay? But in 2010, researchers discovered that they also played a role in the biogenesis of mitochondria. They helped form new mitochondria. Up until that time, researchers knew that there was a couple of ways that you could actually increase the production of your own mitochondria. So if we look back here, one of the ways was to follow a restrictive caloric intake. Okay, so basically reduce the amount of food that you eat, thereby less electrons will be supplied to the electron transport chain and we would produce fewer molecules of ATP here. Okay, so when the cell realizes that less ATP is being produced, it upregulates. And this is a constant thing that we're going to come across again and again and again, this upregulation, where we can trick the body into producing more of the useful substances. So because when we reduce our intake of calories, we produce less ATP, the cell is aware of this, upregulates and causes the production of more mitochondria. On the other hand, we can also stimulate biogenesis of mitochondria by using up more of the ATP. How do we do that? By following a regime of strenuous exercise. So when we exercise, we soak up that ATP so there's less around for the cell to detect, okay? And as a consequence, we can also further stimulate the production of mitochondria by exercise. So two methods researchers prior to 2010 knew were useful in the production of more mitochondria and hence more energy. Reduce the calories and exercise more. Then 2010, PQQ came on the scene and there was a third way that we could actually produce more mitochondria in our cells. So how does PQQ increase the production of mitochondria? How does it, how does it stimulate biogenesis of mitochondria? PQQ interacts with a number of proteins called nuclear transcription factors. These proteins, they go into the cell nucleus and they bind to the DNA and they extract the code necessary for the production of mitochondria. Okay, so there's a whole process where it will bind to the DNA, it will open this DNA strand, copy the DNA, the DNA gets copied to RNA and eventually we produce the proteins required for the formation of mitochondria, okay? And then once we increase the production of mitochondria, as a consequence, we're gonna increase energy. The nuclear transcription factor that PQQ binds to, to stimulate the production of mitochondria is called PGC1-alpha. PGC1-alpha stands for peroxisome, peroxisome proliferated activated receptor gamma coactivated one alpha. And that's the only time I'm gonna say that. I'm only going to refer to it by PGC1 alpha. So, in addition uh, to the, to ha uh, in addition to its use as a nuclear transcription factor, when activated, PGC1 alpha also regulates muscle fibers and is useful in the control of blood pressure, uh, regulation of cholesterol homeostasis or co uh, cholesterol balance, and the development of obesity. Uh, PGC1 alpha is also helpful with reducing the number of free radicals. So essentially, this is how it is thought that PQQ stimulates the production of mitochondria via these nuclear transcription factors. We've discussed how researchers think that PQQ works. We're now going to look at some of the experiments that were done. Uh, in 2003, Japanese researchers published a, a paper in the journal Nature where they thought that they had discovered that P 
PQQ, they discovered molecular evidence to suggest that PQQ was actually an unidentified B vitamin. Now, we'll quickly define what a vitamin is. A vitamin is a substance that the body cannot produce itself. And then this vitamin, to be classed as a vitamin, it has to be essential for some kind of biochemical function that occurs in the body. So these Japanese researchers produced evidence uh, for their claim. They fed mice, two sets of mice. Uh, one was given a PQQ deficient diet and the other one was supplemented with PQQ. The other group of mice was supplemented with a diet that contained additional PQQ. What they found in the first group of PQQ deficient mice, there was a reduction in their growth and it affected their reproductive capabilities. Okay, so and the offspring that was born that were born to these mice, they were unlikely to survive for about three days. And also the skin of these mice was weak and brittle. These mice, the cells of these mice were also found to contain about 30 to 40 percent less mitochondria, and the mitochondria that were present were also smaller than normal and they behaved abnormally. However, in the none of these symptoms occurred where in the in the mice that were supplemented with the PQQ diet. So this was further evidence to suggest that yes, uh, PQQ can be classed as a vitamin. The researchers also discovered that PQQ activates an enzyme that is essential for the production of collagen in mice. And now researchers have found out that PQQ acts on the same enzyme in humans. Other researchers carrying out similar animal studies have found that PQQ is essential for reproduction, early development, growth, and a robust immune uh, response. In uh, researchers found that when rats were fed a uh, PQQ deficient diet, then they suffered growth impairment, they suffered from re reduced uh, reproductive capability, and they had a reduced uh, immune response. Uh, researchers have also found that uh, PQQ has anti inflammatory properties and it's also neuroprotective. It prevents our nerves from being degenerated and can also stimulate nerve growth factors to produce more nerve cells and increase the number of synapses between the nerves, which is good, which is very important for memory. Other researchers have found that it helps uh, cardio, uh, cardiovascular health, particularly after an ischemic attack, i.e. when the heart is deprived of oxygen. In a randomized double-blind controlled trial, which is the gold standard when we are researching uh, or doing experiments, researchers who gave uh, participants 20 milligram of PQQ daily found that it increased their cognitive ability. They were able to recall facts easier. Uh, uh, their thinking was a lot clearer. And this effect was increased when they in addition to the PQQ, they gave coenzyme Q10. So if you think about it, it makes sense because with PQQ, we're increasing the production of mitochondria. And to go with that, we would also need to increase production of coenzyme Q10. So if we supplement that, we, uh, we increase the effects, uh, the positive effects that we see with cognitive function when we take PQQ and coenzyme Q10 together. We mentioned coenzyme Q10, so that's an essential thing that you should take if you want to increase your energy, delay aging, and hopefully prevent the development of these chronic conditions. And in addition to the coenzyme Q10, we've come on to our second nutrient, which is PQQ, which actually increases our on production of mitochondria. So we have more mitochondria, and then we provide these new mitochondria with extra coenzyme Q10. If you remember back to the beginning of the video, I said that PQQ is my favorite mitochondrial nutrient, and I'm going to explain why. What we're going to do is look at the top five PQQ foods. Which foods give you the most bang for your buck in terms of milligram PQQ per kilo of food? So coming in at number five with 34 milligrams of PQQ per kilo of food are green peppers. 
Number four with 34 milligrams of PQQ per kilo of food is parsley. Number three at 61 milligrams of PQQ per kilo of food is our fermented soybeans. So all of these quite easy for us to obtain and eat. Uh, maybe fermented soybeans may be a bit more specialized, but coming in at number two is at 180 milligram of PQQ per kilo of uh, food is human breast milk. Slightly more difficult uh, once we become adults. But coming in at number one with a whopping 800 milligram of PQQ per kilo is cocoa powder. So this means that we can eat dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, remember, dark chocolate, not the glass and a half stuff, not the milk chocolate, dark chocolate. As close to 100% as you can get. Now, this is an excellent source of PQQ. It's good for your health, good for your brain health, good for your cardiovascular health, tastes nice, 